And welcome back to GSI. Basketball season is officially here. Well, at least the practice portion is. Well, it's hard to believe, isn't it? The Griffin men and women officially opened practice for the 2010-2011 season last Friday. And for the Griffin men, they bring 11 new faces to the table this season. And for longtime head coach Tom Smith, this could be a special season in St. Joseph. Um, I think our strengths would be um, uh, our athletic ability, our quickness. Meet the ball. 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 Good. Meet the ball. Meet the ball. Good. There you go. There you go. It's hard for me to say our defense, but I think our defense will be very good by just some of the observations I've had. I think our ability to, uh, to play together and pass the ball, I think those will all be strengths for us. You know, I have high expectations for this group. Um, you know, number one, we have, we have, you know, three kids that probably only have one year or, or do only have one year to play. So, um, you know, we're going to, I think we're going to be okay for a couple years, but, but this is a chance for us to be really, really good, I think. Um, and from what I've seen, you know, I, I have high expectations. I, I would expect that we should be, um, you know, competitive at the top of the league. And you can get your first look at the Griffin men's basketball team in an exhibition contest against Living the Dream Friday, November 5th at 7 p.m. in the Fieldhouse. Meanwhile, the Western women coming off an injury-riddled season. All eight starters are back, eight of them. That's how many different starters there were last year. Jessica Cook leads the charge along with all the old familiar faces and the five new faces as well. Here's a look at practice from day one. I think every first day of practice is usually filled with like a lot of energy. Uh, because they're tired of preseason conditioning and things so and that was very much the case today so I was real pleased with the effort. Oh my gosh it felt great and there were, you know all the new faces and we were all really excited and kind of nervous so that kind of showed on our intensity on the floor so it was a really good practice. It feels great to be back I mean in preseason we've been working really really hard and like I said we have to set new standards this year and so it felt great to be back out on the court. I was real pleased with the effort um, I thought the the uh, communication was, was very good from the standpoint of uh, some of the upperclassmen and the returners being aggressive about helping the other, some of the young players figure out what we were doing on the court. And um, the work ethic was really good. So I was, I was completely pleased with the first day. You know, we're all quick and we're all intense. So you got more recruits that kind of fit that. Um, so we're all going to be flying up the floor and we all kind of have that, you know, build to us. So. We're going we're gonna to get ready to run the ball this year. Griff's open game play November 2nd with an exhibition matchup at the University of Missouri. And coming up on GSI, he fought cancer and won. A special look at Griffin golfer Shane Feist and his journey back. GSI will be right back. And welcome back to the show. Folks, we call this Griffin Sports Insider for a reason. A chance to take an inside look at Missouri Western Athletics and our student athletes. Well, and now a very personal and inside story from one of Western's top athletes. Shane Feist proved himself to be the Griffin's top male golfer this fall. But a year ago at this time, golf was the furthest thing from his mind. Shane Feist never asked to be Western's top golfer. He just is. He's just that good. He's really playing well. I feel great. But nowadays, even the bad days of golf are still good days. That's just a game. I mean, you'd like to do your best, but, you know, there's a lot worse things that could be going on. Feist has already won a fight no 21-year-old should ever have to fight. It was the uh, hardest thing I've ever had to do. It was the summer of 2009, Shane Feist was playing the best golf of his life. He was the Griffin's number one golfer and had just won the North Dakota State Amateur Competition. Then his life would change. A couple weeks after I got home for the summer, I, I found a lump um, and I didn't think much of it. And I kind of looked it up online and um, you're like, there's no way, no way this is happening. Shane Feist was never told he had testicular cancer. He didn't have to hear the words. We all kind of assumed and, and, and knew what we were looking at. Uh, my, you know, my parents didn't, but I did, and my doctor did. You know, and um, I remember my mom came home from work, 
um, after I saw the my the first doctor appointment, she came home from work and uh, and I had to tell her and uh, she called my dad because I couldn't even call him. So. Within three days he was at the Mayo Clinic. The cancer was caught early. The prognosis was good. Feist was given an 85 percent chance of survival. He took last year off from school to stay home in North Dakota where he underwent two surgeries and four rounds of chemotherapy. And then after each cycle you just kept getting more tired and tired and tired. Shane Feist never asked, why me? I didn't let myself think about that because anytime I would think about what if this, what if I don't make it or why did this happen to me, I felt like it was just going to hurt my chances of making it because it made me weaker. So I didn't, I didn't allow myself to think about that. The only thing I allowed myself to think about was beating it. A year later, things are back to normal. Feist is back to his old form on the course, finishing in the top five of two events this fall. He says he wants to be an All-American this spring. Last year, Shane Feist didn't know if he'd be in this position. Now that he's back, he'll approach golf and life the same way he approached the fight he's already won. Try to stay positive, you know, um, lean on your family, you know, try to, uh, try not to think about the, what the end result could be, but think about what you want it to be. Now the fall golf season is over, but look for Feist to be the Griffins' major factor this coming spring. And Brett, this really is a great thing to see. Well, it really is. And, and knowing Shane, Shane has the mental makeup to be able to, to, to fight a, a disease like this. And not only has Shane come back, he's played very well. In five events, he's got two top five finishes. And certainly on the individual side of things, if Shane keeps things up, it'd be really neat to see him be able to go on and play in regional play. Well, we'll definitely look forward to that. GSI will be right back. And welcome back to GSI. Time for our weekly Pick'em segment where we pick the future winners. And once again, Easley's got the Swami jacket. We, we both went four and three last week, which was my best showing. But the tie goes to the runner, so you've got the jacket for the fourth straight week. Speaking of ties, I've done a great job of matching the tie with the coat again. It looks great. All right, let's, Without further ado. Let's get to the Pick'ems. For this week, MIAA football, Northwest at Washburn. That game's been a close one for the last five years. Well, it got? has been. The Ichabods have played the Bearcats close. The sexy pick would detect Washburn. I, once again, I'm not that sexy. Give me the Bearcats. I don't see it either. Washburn had uh, squeaked by Pitt last week, so I take Northwest. UNO at Central. UNO seems to have righted the ship at home, but I don't think they're going to ride it on the road. Plus, Central Missouri, after seeing them last week, they're pretty good. Give me the Mules. Yep, I'll take the Mules as well. Pittsburgh State at Fort Hayes. How about this one? I'll tell you what, Pitt's been close two weeks in a row. They thought they were going to pull out a miracle victory last week, but the field goal kicker missed three kicks down the stretch. Hayes gets the ship right. They win in Hayes. I will take Hayes, and who would have thunk that before the season? We'd be picking Hayes to beat Pittsburgh State. Truman State at Emporia. Good win for Truman last week. They won on homecoming against Southern, but Emporia State, how about them hanging in there with Northwest? Give me, give me the Hornets at home. I will take Emporia as well, and we were all agreed on that one. Now in the Big 12, Texas A&M at KU. <laughs> well, if KU can wake up and know they need the varsity players to play this week, maybe it'll be closer, but I'll take the Aggies. Texas A&M wins by 120. K-State at Baylor. Good matchup here. Uh, give me Baylor in a close game. I think K-State keeps it close. Give me Baylor. I'm going to take K-State, so we'll differ on that one. Oklahoma at Mizzou. ESPN College Game Day there. Big BCS battle for the undefeated Tigers and Sooners. M-I-Z-Z-O-U. Defense is here to play. Give me the Tigers. Uh, I will take Oklahoma. Sorry to not be the homer there, but Mizzou cannot figure out how to beat them, and I don't see that changing. Jags at the Chiefs. Uh, give me the Chiefs. Tough loss last week, but I, I'm a believer. Running game, and the defense will get it right at home. I will take the Chiefs as well. I'm not necessarily a believer, but I just don't think the Jags are very good. Okay, and down to serious business. Missouri Western, possible bounce back game this week at Missouri Southern. What do they need to do? Well, I think for our student athletes and coaches, we, we can't let the Southern over fool us. They've had some close calls in the league. It's on the road. We know what Missouri Southern did to us last year. Uh, I think if we play our game, defense has played well. Again, I know we gave up a lot of yards last week, but I think the key in this game, offensive line needs to play well. Our offense needs to stay on the field. And I think if they can do that, I think we get, get back on the right track. Griffins need to get a win to get a little bit of confidence. I think it comes this Saturday in Joplin. That is GSI for this week. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here next week. And as always, go, go Griffs. Griffs.